Six signs you're too old to be an artist. Number one, weak learning muscles. Is it hard for you to learn now? Was it a lot easier when you were younger? Or perhaps it's just because when you were younger, you learned all the time. You learned every day. You were in school every day. Is it easier for you to lift tough weights, heavy weights, when you are constantly going to the gym? What happens when you stop exercising those muscles for a while and you go back in the gym and you start lifting weights again? Is it tougher? Yes, of course. Just like your learning muscles, they get small, they get shriveled up, and we need to re-exercise them. You know, when we were little, we were going to school every stinking day, learning every stinking day, sitting through classes hours on end, and we were fine with it. You know, we can totally get back into that. But of course, just like working out, you don't want to jump in right away and expect that you're going from zero to eight hours of learning every single day, five days a week. We want to think about it just like going to the gym. We want to start off slowly. We want to start off with something manageable, something that won't make us tear our muscles, so to speak, right? So start off slow, start off with, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes of learning every day. Start off with short lessons and slowly build on top of that. A lot of times we don't even have that much time to begin with. So starting off with short periods of time where it's just dedicated to learning is actually the perfect way to get back into it. All we have to do is get our learning muscles back into the groove of things, getting them nice and healthy, nice and big and strong. Number two, no time. Once you're out of school, you start working, you start growing up, you almost start to kind of gather things on you, all these responsibilities, bills, and so on and so forth as we roll down this hill of life. Don't try to find free time within your schedule to learn. Wherever there is free time, I will schedule in, you know, five minutes to learn. Schedule that time in, no matter how short it is, schedule it in into a position during the day where it will not be movable. Now, if you have kids, if you have all these other responsibilities, a lot of times this just means sleep a little earlier, wake up a little earlier, and take that early bit of time and start working on learning, learning your own stuff. And that's really such a great way to start off the day because it's a tough thing to do. It's something completely new that's not part of our schedule. And when we do a tough thing in the morning, you're gonna feel great about it. You'll never regret learning first thing in the morning. You will never regret it. Once you do start to carve a tiny little sliver into your schedule for learning, slowly try to expand that. How I did it was I started to take on less jobs. I would take on less jobs and slowly start to increase my quality of work and that allowed me to increase my rate. Once you could start charging more, then you ha actually have to do less to reach the same wages that you're used to and then you have a little bit more time to increase the quality of your work even more to increase your knowledge and to learn and to get better number three another sure sign that it's too late for you is that you don't have the ability to save money we need money to get that education and we need that education to get better and to achieve our goals of being great artists if we cannot save money, then we can't do this. But this is the way around it. Every time from now on, whenever you get an increase in your income or you get a raise, anything like that, you only take half of it. The other half of the raise, save it. You're already used to how much money you're getting now. When you get a small raise, cut it in half. You still got a raise and if you save the rest of it, Put it into its own account and save that and only use that for learning, for investing in your future. If you do this, your career will just go nothing but upwards. And if you are ramping up your education to become a great artist, remember that education is an investment as well. We have to think about it as an investment. So if you were to invest in something, when would you want the return on your investment? How much would you want to gain from that initial investment? A lot of people, they don't think about this anymore, especially when they're going to school. You know, they might think, okay, I'm gonna go to this school, it's gonna be for four years, I'm gonna 
have to pay fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, and when I leave, I'm gonna have a two hundred thousand dollar debt. Well, that's fine because that's just school. That's what happens. That's what happens to everybody that goes to this school. Well, don't just accept things because everybody else is doing them. Remember that education, it's an investment. If I am going to invest $200,000 into something, when would I want that money back? Would I want to break even seven years from now, 10 years from now? No, that's a horrible investment. I want to make sure that I'm going to make back that money in two or three years and then gain on my investment after that. That sounds like the most logical, the most normal way of looking at investments. That's why with Schoolism subscriptions, we're trying to make it a no-brainer. We don't want people to even question the fact if it's a good investment or not. With Schoolism subscriptions, you can start your education for the price of a blank sketchbook a month. Right now, there's a summer sale going on on Schoolism as of when this video was first uploaded, and it's going for $120 for a whole entire year. A whole entire year of education for $120. Do you think that you can make back that $120 in two years from now? Do you think you could probably make it back in six months from now? Literally, this is why I created Schoolism. You know, it's to give people a way out, a way to totally absorb the best knowledge in the world and not have to go in tremendous debt for it. And if you've taken Schoolism classes, let the people know in the comments because your testimonial, your own words are going to convince everybody way more than I could in this video. Number four, do you have patience? Because if you don't have patience, then it's too late for you no matter what age you are. Art is something that needs patience. It takes time to get better at art. So don't be in such a rush. Put in all that effort, put in consistent effort, and before you know it, you're gonna get to levels of art that you've never thought you could achieve before. Just keep your nose to the grindstone and just work hard and work on that patience because when you exercise your patience, it will get stronger as well and you'll be able to be more patient, focused for longer periods of time. And that's absolutely essential to become an artist at a high level. Now number five is not a sign that it's too late to become an artist, but number five is why it's even better for you now if you're older to become an artist. You know, I read one time that the decision-making part of our brains on average only matures after the age of 26. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but, you know, it was on the internet, so I guess it's true. But you know what? That makes so much sense because when I was younger, when I was a teenager, I did a lot of dumb things. I did a lot of things where I look back now and I think, why did I do that? And I have no answer. Why? Because I, I was just making really bad decisions. And you know what? After age 26, just around there, I started to make much better decisions. So if you are already over the age 26, you're in your 30s and things like that, well, guess what? You have an advantage on most of these younger people because you have good decision-making abilities. And I seen this when I was in college and I had some older classmates. Wow, they were dedicated, especially if they had kids. You know, they knew what was at stake. They knew what life was more about. And they were able to take their art way more seriously than a lot of the younger people in their early 20s. And lastly, do you still have your true goals? You know, I remember my true goals was to work in feature film. A lot of times what happens is I have these classmates, they have the same goals. And as we graduate, maybe life gets hard, maybe they get more responsibilities, they don't feel like they have enough time, and they start lowering their expectations, lowering their goals. So now their goal is just to have a steady job so that they can provide for their family and things like that. Well, you can provide for your family way more, way better when you have higher goals and you achieve higher things. If you really want to work on AAA games, let that be your goal. Because if you don't hit that goal, guaranteed you're going to be rocking you know, with the art anyways, and you're going to be at a much higher level than if you were just aiming for a job to pay the bills to support your family.
you know, you can support your family way better when you become way more successful. Too many people lower their expectations, lower their goals throughout their lives and never actually reach their goals. If it takes you till age of 65, 70 years old before you actually reach your absolute goal, you will still find that it's absolutely worth it because hardly anybody actually reaches their absolute goal in life. And if you did this, you would be 1% of like the tiny bit of population that actually kept their ultimate goal and achieved it. So keep those goals big, dream big, go after them, fill your brain with as much knowledge as possible on a constant and the world will have no choice but to notice you after a while. Now, as always, if this video has helped you, spread it around with your friends, share it on your social media, things like that. All right, everyone, so if you like the video, you wanna learn more, you wanna improve as an artist, highly recommend clicking over to Schoolism, signing up for the newsletter, because in this newsletter, you will always get free videos and tutorials and news about Schoolism, so you can keep up to date with what's going on in the world. Click over now, and I'll see you guys next time.